Okay, just getting getting down to the nitty gritty here on the uh, 22 RE. Putting the motor back together, and everything. I thought I'd show, you know, just a video where I'm where I'm at for anyone who's kind of curious. What I'm working on right now, as you can see, uh, I rebuilt, I redid the wiring harness on the truck. A lot, a lot of modifications and things, but um, you can see some of my uh, insulation has come free in a couple little little areas. So I was gonna wrap it a little, wrap it again with a little bit of that self vulcanizing tape. Uh, I've got. The intake runner's on okay. I uh, got the cross pipes around the back. And uh, I'm getting ready to reinstall uh, the fuel injectors here. So I'll be doing that tonight. Uh, something else I was going to mention was uh, <clears throat> this time around. Because, you know, when you, when you drain the cooling system, as I've done, and you fill the motor back up, I, I normally disconnect this... Uh, heater the inlet heater hose and put a little funnel and pour uh my coolant in there and try to fill the engine up uh you know kind of around and then up through the cylinder head to get the coolant up into the cylinder head something i noticed over the last couple times i've fired up the engine and drained the cooling system is that uh, when you're trying to purge the air out no matter what you do um no matter no matter how you approach it it seems like until the thermostat kicks open the motor runs a little off and i think that's because there's not enough uh there's like air locked up in the cylinder head so this time around what i'm going to do is i'm going to try leaving this little hose and this is the supply line that goes to the idle air control valve uh, but it is located underneath the thermostat and so i suspect that if i leave this open and then do my funnel trick over here uh, i'll be able to bring the level of coolant up into the cylinder head and purge the air out of that so i'm going to do that uh, this time around you can see i got the distributor on um i I was watching a video today on engine uh, dyno simulation software uh, specific to camshaft timing. And as I may have mentioned in some previous videos, I timed the camshaft five degrees retarded. And I ended up on the phone with web cams today, and I was just confirming that I had everything timed correctly and, you know, should I, uh, you know, use... Uh, just, just double checking that the, their cam card uh, is designed to be used at 50 thousandths lift off the valve spring retainer. And I was just double checking everything I did and had done and I mentioned that I had adjusted the cam with the uh, valve lash set to factory specs. And in talking with web cams they mentioned oh well actually you're supposed to do that with no lash and so that explains kind of a slight anomaly i saw with with my timing so uh the cam timing so i ended up having to go back and run the numbers and i discovered that having the valve lash involved and, and this was just purely my mistake uh having the valve lash involved while i was attempting to set the cam timing i, I inadvertently from what I can figure out with the math on, on my timing, uh, my cam stuff, I inadvertently set the cam to, instead of 5 degrees retarded, I set it to five approximately 5.5 degrees retarded. It's not enough, <clears throat> it's not enough of a, an error to warrant uh, resetting the cam timing at this point, because I just want to get the motor fired up. But it it, it is something I wanted to mention, because... When you get down into the nitty gritty of timing your motor, uh, and I was discussing this with Faith over at Webcams, uh, who, by the way, she's super knowledgeable about camshaft timing. If if you guys ever uh, are dealing with, uh, you know, who should I, what company should I use for my custom camshaft? I I, I want to put in a a very strong endorsement for uh, Webcams. Um, 
just based on my interaction with all the different cam companies, I, I, I've been really most impressed with them. And that is who, as I mentioned in the previous video, that, that is who grinds the cam for uh, LC Engineering, is, at least from, from kind of what I've, I've figured out. So, uh, But in any event, in speaking with Faith over at Webcams, uh, I, I was kind of discussing, you know, the timing and verifying you know how do I approach this and everything and we got on the subject of how kind of a lot of the historical cam card information kind of came from you know the V8 muscle car world and I, as I mentioned in the previous videos occasionally I, I started out my first motor I re rebuilt was a 1966 Ford Mustang with a 289 so I have you know I have nothing against V8s it's just that because a lot of kind of camshaft technology and terminology and approach stems from that kind of camshaft in the middle of your V8 with lifters and push rods, uh, when, when everyone kind of started grinding cams for, you know, single and dual overhead motors, there was kind of some little bit of... Uh, legacy approach and information from the v8 world and so it can get kind of confusing when you're trying to decipher some of these these things like uh you know where do i pick up my valve lift and am i am i am i measuring it off the lobe you know or the lifter or do, do i measure it off the valve itself which on an overhead cam motor or any motor takes into account rocker arm ratios and you know if i've got tap if i got a cam you know tap it a solid tap it cam like on the 22re you know should i adjust my valves first and then measure my cam timing when i put the cam in or should i you know what should i do and this is a perfect example i <clears throat> funny oddly enough i first measured i first dialed in the cam with zero lash kind of and i was thinking inadvertently and then i thought oh shoot i gotta go back and adjust the lash and then I I timed my cam and it turned out that yeah actually I, I probably should have just gone with the the first one there that had no lash um anyways that's kind of where we're at here uh let me see if there's anything else interesting happening over on the bench here uh eh, I guess not I mean I, I'm gonna run I might have mentioned in the other video I'm gonna run uh one step cooler plugs on the motor. Uh, these are the Denso uh, W20s. Now I grind off uh, I don't have any plugs laying around here. Uh, on the, these are the plugs that I use when I sprayed my straw. Uh, but, oh, you know what? They're probably in, in the back here somewhere. And here's the fuel injections I'm, I'm getting ready to put in. Oh yeah, here's some plugs. Okay. So you can see that I like to run no, effectively no ground strap. Let's see if I can focus this guy in a little bit. So you can kind of see what I do is I, I grind off, you know, ninety-eight percent of the the ground strap, and in some cases I've actually ground hundred percent of it off. And as I mentioned in a couple of other videos, uh, there's some interesting white papers on the internet about uh, engine vibration and the impact of spark plug gap. Uh, I've tried a lot of different things, but I've come to the conclusion that this configuration really smooths out the motor. Uh, yes, it's, <laughs> you know, 3 sixteenths of, of an inch uh, effective spark plug gap, but I'll tell you what, motor runs way better that way, so I gotta grind off the ground strap on these guys. Now, keep in mind, I am running a slightly higher output uh, MSD coil and some nice for spark plug wires here so I'm able to run a little bit uh, wider wider gap without any problems but got the oil in the motor uh, I'm going to probably pull out or well, I guess it's already out pull out the 15 amp uh, EFI fuse leave the spark plugs out and then spin the motor over to pre-oil it, even though I uh, used, you know, some uh, driven racing uh, kind of pre-lube. I, I used their HVL product and their uh, their 
engine assembly gel. I have to say I was not overly impressed with the engine assembly gel. Uh, it seemed like it just kind of wandered off from where I put it for the most part. Uh, I think I'm going to go back to the, the ultra slick uh, Permatex product and uh, for future kind of engine assembly stuff. Nothing against driven. I mean, I'm running their braking oil, or not their braking oil, but I'm going to run their, their engine oil. I just wasn't overly impressed with, with that little gel stuff. But that's all right. Uh, let's see what else. I guess I guess that's kind of about where we're at here. So I'm going to get the fuel injection put on, uh, the fuel injectors put in, and I'm going to uh, re uh, wrap up this uh, little kind of area and... And, and tighten this up a little bit here with some 3M self uh, vulcanizing uh, fusing tape. And then we'll be kind of in the final stretch here. Get the intake uh, plenum back on and a few of these little electrical connections. Prime the motor, uh, put the plugs in purge the cooling system. I'll be re real interested to see, and I'll, and I'll mention in the comment section below, uh, whether my my purging with this uh, idle air control valve lying open uh, helped. Because like I said, the last couple times I've drained the coolant and had to fire up the motor, it, it ran a little funky right before, uh, right before the thermostat opened and I was get, able to get the air out. So I'm gonna try to see if, if uh, purging the air ahead of time will prevent that. And like I say, the, the thing that really worried me was I had vapor lock up in top of the cylinder head, which w could potentially, you know, be not so good when it comes to cooling that cylinder head as the motor comes up to temperature. So I, I definitely want to avoid that. Uh, oh, and somebody in, in one of my last videos mentioned what's going on with your crazy uh, fan, uh, you know, pulley there. <laughs> And uh, what it is, is I've converted the motor to an electric fan, as you can kind of see in here. And so as a result, I, I, got, I ditched the clutch uh, mechanism. And this, and this is just a, a, a polished aluminum kind of pulley from LC Engineering. And I've got, I've got it held on with some titanium uh, little Allen cap screws or whatever. And I'll tell you what, that the nose of the uh, water pump gets in my way all the time. And I, and I, one of these days I'm going to take a die grinder and cut that thing down by half. I can't really do it right now because I don't want metal shavings flying all over the motor, especially not near my alternator. And also I'm, I, I have to do some sort of cooling uh, affair so I don't melt whatever they got going on with the bearings in there or the seals on the water pump. But but for the for the guy on the channel who was asking what is up with your crazy uh, water pump pulley that that's that's the story there. And then uh, this is actually the fan switch. And uh, for any of you who've seen the the uh, video on my dashboard and stuff like that, I've got a I've got like a little bypass switch where I can manually turn the fan on and off. So that's kind of kind of handy to get a jump on cooling the motor occasionally. So, okay, I think that's about it. Uh, just steadily working uh, to get the motor together and get it fired up. Uh, I, I'll try to get, I'll try to catch a video of firing the motor up, although I'm kind of shorthanded here. Uh, so, you know, I'm not sure if I can man the camera and get the motor fired up the way I want. So, but it's getting there. A uh, few more days and we'll have the truck back on the road. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions on any of the stuff I've touched on, feel free to use the comment section below.